Draymond Green reportedly wants a maximum contract extension from the Warriors. Is he worth it? And how are the Warriors going to pay all these guys? That's going to be an expensive team. They'll have to make some tough decisions. And what teams could fall out of the playoffs who were in that mix last year in both conferences? We'll count them up and do it all today. Locked on NBA. You are locked on NBA. Your daily NBA podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hey, everybody. Happy Thursday, welcome into Locked On NBA, where we give you the latest and greatest news from around the association. I'm Tony East, the host of Locked On Pacers. He's Pat, the designer, one of the hosts of Locked On Bulls. Pat, give it to me. What are you feeling on this lovely Thursday? Oh man, I'm uh, I'm feeling like I'm hoping somebody's gonna pay me a Draymond deal. Yeah, I mean, we might as well, right? Go all out. <laughs> that Got is you. right. Draymond Green, reportedly per Anthony Slater and Marcus Thompson in the Athletic, two fantastic journalists report that Green would like and thinks he deserves a max contract extension from Golden State. Is he worth that kind of money? We'll talk about that and the rest of the Warriors' considerations with their tax bill and extensions for other key players of their championship team before. We'll count them up as we do on Thursday here on Lockdown NBA. What teams and how many teams who made the playoffs last year will not make it this coming season? A shockingly hard exercise. Let's start with Draymond. This is a lot of dollars we're talking about here, Pat. Draymond Green is eligible for a contract extension on August 3rd, a week from yesterday, if you're listening on Thursday. And if he declines his player option for the 2023-24 season, he could start his extension the year following this one. It would start at about 33, uh, I believe. It would start at $31 million, scaling up to a total extension of adding four years, $138.5 million, making his total contract five years, $164 million. Whoa, that's a lot of money. Also... He was just the second best player on a championship team. Does Draymond have a point? Does he, at his age, is he worth this much money? Where do you feel like the Warriors and Draymond should figure something out here with this extension? I think you got to come somewhere in the middle, right? I mean, you're talking about a guy who you know he's the glue on a team, right? But how much are you willing to pay for glue? You know, I settled at $2.99 in my local hardware store. So <laughs> I, I, I try... I, I I see Draymond's point. I, I absolutely do, right? Because the the Draymond's the kind of guy, not to say, right, you can't replace what he is, but how, where do you find that replacement? Is that going to be James Wiseman? Is that going to be Wiggins? Is that going to be Poole? Right, like, when you look at a guy like Draymond, those are the guys where you look back at championship teams, and a lot of times, what do we say? You know what? When we lost that guy. They were just never the same. And so it really comes down to how much do you feel having that glue guy, that mouthpiece, that guy who is going to be the the toughness or or the a, a portion of the leadership on the team. How much do you feel that is worth, right? I I don't want to undersell Draymond's worth to this team, but that's a lot of freaking money. It is. We're talking about a player that you would like you pay that money to a guy like that's giving you 20 points a game and, and eight rebounds. You know, Draymond's giving you playing the passing lanes, doing the dirty work, doing a lot of those things, right? And if you want to give him a loyalty contract, I 100% understand it from the Warriors' standpoint. But with how the Warriors' cap situation is, that's going to be tough to pay a loyalty contract to a guy like that. See, usually to me, well, like a team like Golden State, who is so far over the salary cap yeah. already, right? If they extend Draymond Green, it doesn't matter from a salary perspective in the fact that it's not like they would have been able to use that money on something else, right? Yeah. So the only harm to the Warriors really is their ownership paying an absolute metric ton of cash. <laughs> like, Which like, he's already doing. <laughs> yeah, their tax bill was insane last year. And that's part of the reporting from Slater and Thompson is like their tax bill, if they extend all five of these guys, and we'll talk about Thompson and Wiggins and Poole, uh, and I'm missing one. Uh, but anyway, in the next segment, but I mean, their their tax bill would be insane. So it kind of comes down to can, where can they save money to not be paying 400 million, not in salary, in tax penalties only, absurd money. And that's where you have to get down to it with guys like Draymond. Not because Draymond isn't awesome, because I'm about to give you a bunch of points that say Draymond is amazing. He is awesome, but because he's 30. 
three years old next season. Yeah. He's 32 right now. And that's where the end of this contract could get messy is if he's just not able to give you anything. And on the back end of this contract, he's making $36 million and then $38.5 million in the last two years. Yeah. So let me talk about Draymond Green for a second, if you don't mind. Go ahead. Draymond Green was an all-star last season. Last year, Draymond Green was an all-star. Awesome player. Uh, and I hear a lot of this argument. Draymond Green would not be Draymond without Steph. I get why that argument exists. I think a lot of times, though, the argument should be made the other way around. And let me tell you why, Pat, as I ramble for way too long without letting you speak. I apologize. Last season in the playoffs, the Warriors, with Draymond Green and Steph Curry on the court, had a plus 9.5 net rating. That's very good. Uh, last year in the playoffs with Draymond Green on the court and Steph Curry not on the court. So Draymond, no Steph. Plus 7.6. That's also very good because Draymond is very good. But if you flip it and have Steph on the court and Draymond off the court, the Warriors' net rating in the playoff last year was plus 0.6, barely above an average team. And with both of them off, obviously, their net rating was terrible because those guys are amazing. Draymond is the engine for the Warriors. Obviously, Steph drives all the gravity, helps all these dudes get open, makes their life easier. He's the best player on that team. I'm not denying that at all. Steph is easily the best player on the Warriors, one of the best players in the NBA. Draymond is the engine for everything the Warriors do. Even if Steph starts falling off, the quick decisions he can make with the ball, his defensive prowess, the connection he gives to all these guys is super valuable to their success. And so even if, as he gets to age 36 and 37, he's not as good, I think the first couple years of this contract for an all-star level player who makes you maybe the best team in the NBA right now is super worth it, even if you're paying a cabillion dollars in taxes to make it happen. Yeah. It's 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 a tough case, right? Because you also have to ask yourself, which Draymond are you getting, right? Like, are you getting Draymond from the finals that was game five and six? Are you getting Draymond where his mom's calling him out saying, don't stop asking me what's wrong with him. I don't know what's going on, right? Like, that that's kind of the biggest caveat True. to it. And of course, right, the, the mouthpiece, the engine, all of that, you can't dispute any of that when you're talking about Draymond Green on that team. He's that glue guy. He's that he's that guy that keeps everybody together. And you and like I said, those are the guys that when you lose them, you look back on those teams and you'd be like, they just never were the same without Draymond. But you also have to ask yourself, right, can you find that guy again? Can you find a guy who can be the glue guy on this team? Can you find a guy who can go out there? Is that guy already on the team, right? Because, listen, you're also talking about a Warriors team that is coming off of an NBA championship-level run, which means Jordan Poole now has that experience. Andrew Wiggins now has that experience. Can they find a way to maybe have that guy all out? You also have to take into account the biggest loss to me for the Warriors in this situation, and we had uh, Cyrus on from Locked On Warriors on Locked On Bulls this week. He was talking about Gary Payton the second being such a big loss. I thought that was going to be the guy. I thought that was your next level glue guy, and he's no longer in the building. So if you feel like you've got a couple more rings out of this team that could be gotten, but all you have to do is pay Draymond his money, the rings are worth the money at the end of it, right? Like, you're going down as one of the best teams of, of all time already. And now you're talking about adding possible championships to that. Yeah, if they win another title, I mean, they're in, they're in that mix for best dynasty in NBA history or close to it. Uh, the other factor here, by the way, is Steph Curry's new extension starts this season. He has four years left on his deal. So maybe they don't go all the way to a full four-year max with Draymond. But if they had three years, they line up his contract with Steph's. That gives you a firm timetable of this is the, the era of Warriors basketball. This is how we chase titles with Steph, with Draymond, with whatever of these other guys we decide to extend or keep around. And then that's a long runway to have James Wiseman grow into whatever he's going to be, to have Moses Moody grow into whatever he's going to be. Jonathan Kuminga's even on that team. right? If you get the right extensions and line them up, you can very seamlessly transition from one era to the next. So even if it's not a max, and I think Draymond, honestly, one for his contributions in the past, but two for the arguments I made last earlier, is probably worth it to me, even if it is going to suck at the end. But if you're able to get Draymond to just take one year less and line that up with Steph and maybe even agree to that with some of these other guys as well, yeah. I think that seems like a win-win that helps the Warriors bridge from their title to their next era without being super expensive and still helps Draymond feel like he got his money and well-earned cash for how well he's played in his career. I think the interesting 
thing is the hard stance Draymond's taking on it. He's willing to play elsewhere. It's like, bro, you realize you're 33, right? Like, like I get it, right? Like, we get what you are, but like, what's elsewhere? Where are you where are you going? Where... <laughs> that's just that's such an interesting take on it to me, man. I mean, there, there's a lot of things that I think the Warriors are gonna be able to do, but I mean. <sighs> what's what's more important to you or do you feel like you can do something else with that money that's going to be the question um before we keep it going man we got plenty of warriors talk for you guys today shout out to you guys for tuning in and listening to us man but before we do that we gotta tell you about built bar built bar has been supporting the locked on network for so long man and i'm sure everybody on this network has told you once how fire the puffs are if you haven't tried the built bar puffs yet you are depriving yourself of one of life's greatest joys and guess what there's a new flavor hey tony you ready for this one delicious indulgent cookie dough i'm i'm i feel fat but it's 160 calories. That's the thing about it. Covered in 100% chocolate. That's right. Built has done it again. Let me introduce you to their new flavor. Cookie dough chunk puffs have a light and chewy texture. Real cookie dough chunks. And, of course, they're covered in 100% real chocolate. Like I said, all the joys of eating cookie dough without the hassle of making it. Plus, it's healthy for you. Let me tell you something. What's great about Built is that all of their bars are made with the collagen protein, which your body can absorb more effect efficiently and provides a ton of health benefits. Eat something that tastes good and is good for you. I promise you, you are going to love the new cookie dough chunk puff. Whether you need a snack for your workout, a late night treat, that's what I use it for right there. Let me tell you right now, when you go into bed and you need a little something else, a little something sweet, you know, you take a bite right there. Or you just need a quick bite. Built is the perfect protein bar, and they taste better than a candy bar. That's facts, actually. I had a crunch bar the other day, and it just wasn't the same. Dish the calories, fat, and sugar. Grab yourself a Built bar. Go to Built.com and use the promo code LOCKED15 and get 15% off of your order. Use that promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off your order. Everybody. Thanks, as always, for making Locked On NBA your first listen, first stop every single day. All Locked On podcasts free and available on all platforms, including YouTube, where you can see our beautiful faces and Pat's ridiculously nice setup compared to mine. It's off the charts. So your second listen, Locked On Pacers, Locked On Bulls, take your pick. I'll suggest Locked On Bulls. Pat and Hayes do a great job over there. Let's talk about the rest of the Warriors, because I think Draymond is the leading story for good reason as a many-time All-Star and a very talented player. But a big key part of this story, really early on in the story, is, look, if the Warriors are going to be paying this ridiculous thing, like if they keep all these guys, their tax bill could reach $500 million. And their owner has basically said, that's not happening. <laughs> no, I am not paying that much money. And, and who can blame him? Um, no one should ever want their owner to pay less money, but that is like a different realm of cash that you're shelling out yeah. for one team. So thus... The, what is said in the article is like, and because of how the repeater tax work is, and how uh, it scales up as you pay more to your team, even slashing one of the max extensions away, getting one of those players to a different team or having less salary, saves the Warriors a ton, like 150 to 200 million in tax payments, a crap ton of money, a full roster of players full of money, to put it in perspective. And so of their four extension eligible guys who so they could just pay all of them but they won't or at least this indicates that they won't in the athletic still suggest reading this you know clay thompson will be coming up for an extension pretty soon jordan Poole, i believe is extension eligible now andrew wiggins i think is extension eligible now or soon and draymond it might be a game of the warriors of pick three or maybe even pick two if two of those guys get a max so to you pat how would you prioritize keeping those guys paying those times give giving them money long term well, I mean, for me, right, I'm all about building it out. We haven't seen a team really pass the torch. Maybe the Spurs, right? But then they kind of botched it with the whole Kawhi thing. But if you're the Warriors, right, you got to feel like you've got that pass the torch moment in place here. You've got Poole. You've got Wiggins. You've got Wiseman still on a rookie deal, and you don't even know if he's good yet. You feel like he is, but you haven't seen him play enough basketball for you to know that he's good yet. I think right now if I'm prioritizing anything, I'm prioritizing keeping – 
my youth and figuring it out, right? Like, as I love Draymond Green, and I do think Draymond Green's the engine for that team. But if it if it costs you a couple of years where you feel like you're going to have some years where maybe you're competing for a conference finals or maybe you're competing in the second round, but you're getting these young guys ready to go and you got to go through the draft and find that next Draymond Green, to me, right, like, what's, what's the best case scenario here? Do you want to prioritize youth and and keeping a competitive team if you're the owner of this team for years to come or do you want to prioritize winning now and possibly looking back and saying man we could have at least still been competitive now and now we kind of have emptied the cupboard to keep the older guys in here and keep it moving so for me i would prioritize at a minimum to me i i say wiggins i think he became the ultimate every man's gay game in that uh, 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 finals. And I think he took a real step there. I think I would prioritize him over everyone else. And then if you can hold on to pool as well, hold on to pool. Yeah. Wiggins is only 27. So even on a longer term deal, and he is in the last year of his contract, he's extension eligible right now. If the Warriors want to do it for a ton of money, I don't think he's worth quite a max level extension, but a lot uh, they could do that. So I agree with you that there needs to be, or at least the ideal situation for them should be, a bridge to the next era. Even if their next team, after Steph, after Clay, after Draymond, is way cheaper, yeah, they need to still have something. You know, you can tear it down to the studs if you want, but that's I don't think what the Warriors want to do. You don't want to just go from this dynasty level team to just terrible all of a sudden. You got to keep your fans interested. Right. That is why I think my number one choice, if I'm them, is Poole. I think Poole will be the guy I prioritize the most in this. You know, 22-year-old last year, at least he turned 23, I think right before free agency started. I, I can't yeah. remember. Um, 18 points, 18 and a half points per game last year. Good shooter, good ball handler, and put together the playmaking to show that he could do stuff yeah. if called upon in a bigger role. And not only did he do all that, he kept doing it in the playoffs, which is a big part of what the Warriors want to see. Yeah. At his age, you know, he could be the bridge of, you know, all of a sudden they're rolling out Poole, Wiseman, Moody, Kuminga, and whoever their fifth guy is. It doesn't matter. You know, that is a that's still a good next team. So I think he'd be the first guy I think about. And Wiggins, because he's only 27, if you could same thing I talked about, line him up with Steph even, or maybe a three-year extension, that would make a lot of sense to me too. So I'm kind of torn between Clay being or, uh, Clay being awesome in the past, but not as good last season, um, and Draymond. You know, how do you determine which one of those guys you want to pay more to? Because Clay massively overpaid. One of the worst contracts in the NBA right now. Not to uh, I hate to dump on Clay because you know, what a horrible two and a half year run he had of, of not playing. But uh, he's making a lot of money to be good, but not as nearly as good as he used to be. Yeah. Uh, at 40 million this coming season and 43 million the following year. You know, he's not worth that much. And so you can have an extension that's less than your salary. If he would make less money, that's fine. But he seems like the odd one out to me if I had to decide uh, which guy to pay less. 32 years old, turns 33 this coming season. But, again, it's not my money. It's not my decision. I think, though, if I had to rank them, I would say Poole would be the most important and Clay would be the least important if I had to prioritize which guys to give long-term money to. It's 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 interesting, right, because for me, right, like I think Clay's a skill set that can come back quicker. That is true. Um, Draymond, while I, I think that, like I said, right, going to be in the past and he's going to do the dirty work, right? Guys can only do the dirty work for so long. You usually don't see those careers extend into, I mean, honestly, like Draymond's having a very long career for his style of game and how aggressive he plays on a lot of people. So I think to me, right, Clay's the kind of game where like, all right, yeah, he was off a little bit, came back halfway through the season, kind of spent most of the season trying to just get his mechanics right. And then once he got his mechanics right, he had a couple of games in the playoffs. Nothing crazy. But you can see that definitely come back. There was also some games where I think Steve Kerr was like, just go shoot, Clay. Just go shoot. Because there was some there was some games in that playoffs where it was like, not like uh, what was it, game six? Versus, uh, not not the was it the who they play in the in the Western Conference Finals? Was it the Mavs? Mavs, Mavs. right? In the Western Conference Finals. Yeah, Game wow. Six. Clay did not show up in the Western Conference Finals, but he was shooting like he was supposed to be there. <laughs> yeah, he had thirty two when they closed out Dallas. Right, he still he still had some very good playoff games, some very very good playoff games. I still think Clay has a lot in him. 
I just think at his current price number, <laughs> they should not extend him. But again, if he's amendable to a much lower salary, that's important. But he, like him and Draymond, both kind of feel like they deserve it given the success of this franchise for the last eight years. Yeah. And if you go on the legacy contract side and say, yes, you know, these guys sell jerseys, these guys are the fan favorites. And I think there's something to that, right? Like part of the Warriors dynasty being so well liked, I think, both locally and nationally is like they drafted a lot of these guys. It's been an in house team. They've all grown yeah. together. Keeping that together, I think, has some value. And so maybe Wiggins is the guy they decide not to extend just because he's not a part of that crew and he's probably the the worst non-clay guy of all these guys. But I think pool is the most easy. Yes, this is one you do. Here's the money guy. And the rest I think you can debate a little bit and that's where it's going to get a little tricky for the Warriors. And you said you said something I want to push back on it. I can't believe a locked on Bulls host would say this. Draymond Green's nitty gritty, dirty skill set goes away early. Dennis Rodman got paid on that till he was 38 years old. He was the best rebounder in the league at age 36. Come on, come on. De- Dennis, Dennis Rodman also just left the game on his own terms. Like, <laughs> okay, and he also that- was much more skilled than Draymond. Yeah, well, yeah, on, the yeah. Glass, on the glass specifically, I should say, <laughs> uh, than Draymond. Not th- maybe not more skilled overall, but either way. Yeah. Uh, come on, give 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 him some love for the old guy who made it to 38. <laughs> I I love it, man. I love it. I I remember Rodman just like on the Lakers and Shaq was talking about him. He's just like, he just shows up, eats ramen noodles, grabs 20 rebounds and goes home. (laughs) So like maybe, maybe Draymond becomes that, but I think, I think we're comparing like one of the best to ever do it. I get okay. All right, I'm I'm there with you. I'm, I'm there with uh, that you. might not be a good comparison, but hey, I wanted, to, <laughs> I wanted to give Draymond a chance to get to 38. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what he. We'll see what it works out to be, man. I don't know. <laughs> let's let's count them up. Our Thursday segment here on Lockdown NBA inverse of last week, where we just said how many teams will jump into the top four in the playoffs that weren't there last year. Instead, we're going to change it up and tweak a little bit. How many teams that made the playoffs last year? will not make it this coming season. A shockingly hard exercise. Let's count them up on Lockdown NBA. Welcome back into Lockdown NBA. Thanks for making us your first listen every day. We're free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. Let's count them up, Pat. This is a hard exercise because the playoffs were pretty good last year, the teams that made it, and a lot of those teams got better. The eighth seed in the East, the Hawks, bring in DeJounte Murray. The six seed gets better. The five, a lot of the teams in the East get better. Out West, Golden State, we just talked about. Memphis, Phoenix, status quo, they should all be good. Denver looking like they're going to get better. Minnesota got better. New Orleans got better. It's really hard to think of teams that will obviously be dropping out of the playoffs. So let's count them up. We'll start in the East. Of the eight Eastern Conference playoff teams last year, how many of them will not make the playoffs this coming season? And is your number greater than one? Because that's where I think this gets interesting. My number is definitely not greater than one. <laughs> there's, I think there's only one that there's possibly even an argument to say. And even with that, right, like it still gets it gets a little interesting for me. But I think Brooklyn's probably the one team yep. that I'm looking at in that Eastern Conference Finals just because of the confusion, right? And it's the only team I can even say right now that uh, uh, I think could drop out because that team could be completely different in two to three weeks. Yeah, I'm saying, like, it, it, with, there's talks now that, listen, the Warriors could solve all their money tro- troubles by shipping a bunch of people over there and bringing Kevin Durant back. Um, you know, <laughs> uh, 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 Phoenix could could is still possibly in play for him. You know, th- those are two things. And then once KD gets moved, the possibility that uh, Kyrie goes increases a lot higher. And I'm sorry, a team of Ben Simmons and TJ Warren doesn't get me excited uh, at the for the playoffs. Um I will say, though, I don't feel like a lot of the teams that improved, I guess, like Cleveland's the one team I look at that I say might make a jump there, but I don't think Charlotte really got better. I think Charlotte's biggest problem was LaMelo Ball had nobody to pass the ball to. He was throwing the ball to guys open in the corner to knock down threes, and they didn't knock them down. The Knicks, to me, if they get Donovan Mitchell and they get Jalen Brunson, that's going to take a minute for me to gel, right? Like, And they're a... um, they're a very small backcourt. <laughs> so I don't see anybody on this list that I feel like is going to take this huge jump. Yeah, I think if if assuming a Durant trade happens, which could just not even be the case, if the Nets keep those guys, my answer might be zero. 
Yeah. The Cavs could push into it. They were the eight seed after the regular season, but lost Absolutely. in the play in. And for them to not just outright make it, it took Gar- uh, Garland getting hurt for a little bit, Mobley getting hurt for like a month, Allen getting yep. hurt for like a month. Like yep. if they're even a wee bit healthier, they should make it. But who do you put them in over? And I agree with you, Brooklyn is the obvious choice, but uh, that might not even be easy. So it might be hard for the Cavs to sneak into this conversation. But like Atlanta got better. They were the ninth seed in the regular season last year. So the Knicks are my wild card, right? The Knicks and Cavs could be the teams to sneak in there. If the Knicks get Mitchell, yeah, they'll be better. How much better? I don't know. That's where things get hard. Pat, I'm going to say it. You can cut me off at any time. Just, just let me get through the whole point. Let's talk about Chicago for a second. I think... I think the Bulls will be as good or better than last year. That said, uh, Lonzo's injury, very scary. And he was very important for them last year. They were much better with him out there than not. I don't think that's a secret. Lonzo Ball is very good. Yeah. So if they are missing 100% Lonzo or even Levine, he had offseason surgery, right? Like if, 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 if those things matter to the Bulls and they're not getting as much from their backcourt, perhaps they could take a small step back. But DeRozan was so good last year that maybe that's overthinking it. They caught I'll be back by training camp, but it doesn't matter. I still think the Bulls are a playoff team. I think they'll pit, finish about that 6-5 spot again. But they could be health withstanding one of the teams that falls out for the Cavs or the Knicks. But I could be wrong. Tell me why I'm wrong. I, I, I don't know if they fall out right, and I think health is the biggest thing on that, right? I think when, when people talk about Zach Levine, there's this thought that like he's injury prone, and really Zach Levine's last injury was when we got him. That was five years ago, and he had that injury before he came to the Chicago Bulls. He's had little tweaks and things like that there, but he's been a player that really has played through injury in his time and has prided himself on his toughness. Not having Lonzo Ball is massive. I will say that right um, because I, I even over on my channel, the Windy City Breeze, I did like a reaction of like Zach Levine highlights. And when you see how many of them are like Lonzo Ball starting the break to Zach Levine, <laughs> you're just looking like, wow, he's he's really good. But you also have Io DeSumo, who I believe can take a step and was one of the best on ball defenders in the NBA last year. Gives you a lot of those things that Lonzo brought you. Probably if Lonzo's not there, you're moving Caruso in at that backup point guard or maybe even starting point guard spot. So there's still some options there, but the team's definitely not as good. I don't know if I see them taking a step backwards, right? There was six seed last year, but I definitely could see them, if if 100% healthy, I definitely see the Bulls as a top four team in this Eastern Conference. It might be a little homerism. I know they're going to say it in the comments. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Yeah, them falling out would be health only to me. And you could yeah. say that about every team, right? Like if every team's best right. player gets hurt, yeah, they won't make the playoffs. They just have the question marks about health now because yeah. Lonzo already was hurt and Levine was. That's why I bring them up, but I agree with you. I don't think they fall out. I just wanted to include them. The Western Conference. Wow, this one's tough. The Lakers are going to try to get in there. The Blazers are going to try to get in there. The Kings even are going to try to get in there. The Clippers, who were the eighth seed after the regular season but didn't make it through the play-in. Holy cow, they're going to try to get in there. That's four teams trying to sneak into the playoffs. Uh, I did not get to four when I was counting the number of teams I think won't make it in the West. It's going to be a bloodbath. Look, we can do the obvious one together. But did you have a number higher than one? For Western Conference teams that made the playoffs last year, you think will not make it this coming season? Um, I mean, I had to, right? Because I had, I think I had four teams that I thought had a, had a chance to get <laughs> to in. in. So, I mean, mathematically, right, four teams have to have a chance to drop out. Um, I think Minnesota's a lock to be in there. I think Utah's the obvious one that I'm sure Bingo. both of us had. See ya. Bye. Easy. <laughs> yeah, Utah, Utah to me is the obvious one. I think the Grizzlies, I love what they're doing, and I feel like they're a team that's going to be in there. I definitely feel like they drop a little bit. I don't know if they drop out of the playoffs, but I definitely feel like they drop because as I'm looking at a lot of the teams around the Western Conference, right, and especially with uh, uh, Jaron Jackson having offseason surgery, you feel like they're going to be missing some major pieces starting this thing off. So I feel like they drop. They could be a team to watch out for as the odd man out. I think the Clippers are going to get in to the playoffs and so who's dropping out you might be talking about the reigning mvp's team being outside of the playoffs next season and i'll tell you this make sure y'all got that same smoke y'all had for him that you had for lebron this year i'm not even a lebron fan but if we got mvps missing playoffs out here make sure that smoke is there but of course it's health induced right there's a reason for it um and i i don't know man it, it's always tough for me like even after watching this season i'm like I feel like the Lakers will make the playoffs. <laughs> it's, it's just like, what? why? They got LeBron. I don't know. They got LeBron. Fine. 
They have LeBron and Anthony Davis. Last time yeah. I checked, still on their so. team. The the West is insane. Like like someone who who has expectations of being pretty good this season is going to finish twelfth, twelfth in the West, and yeah. and that could be the team with injuries. Like more so than I just talked about with the Bulls. Like that is going to be huge yeah. in the West. So yes, Utah out. See you later. I don't I don't even care if they have Mitchell. <laughs> they're still out. Like the rest of their team is just not good enough. They did not. as it stands now. They're the easy one. See ya. And then you put the Clippers in their spot. Bada bing, bada boom. Maybe that's all you do. Um, but the Blazers want to make it. The Lakers want to make it. And the Pelicans, who were eight last year, could move up. You know, got something got to give here. I agree that Denver is interesting because I think they should be much better than last year, like with Porter and, and Murray playing more often. They made a good trade this summer. But I get why they could fall. They were six last year. I can't believe I want to say this, but I got to I got to air it out. Let's talk about Dallas for a second. Hmm. Uh, they they have Nick, Luka don't Dante. listen to this one. They, <laughs> Nick's not here today. It's me, so I can do this right. Look, look, Luca, probably the favorite for MVP heading into next season. Yep. Going up to, he's still super young and getting better every year. Was unbelievable last year. Got them to the conference finals. Uh, they also lost Jalen Brunson, and are really counting on on Tim Hardaway resurgences and continued excellence from Spencer Dinwiddie to be as good as last year. And hey, guess what? Those guys have shown they can do it before, in the postseason and the regular season. So maybe I'm overthinking this. But losing Brunson is a lot to overcome, and maybe Luka gets better to the point that it doesn't matter, but there's a chance they're worse than last year, and if they are, the the margins are not that big. You know, They were six games ahead of the play-in last year. That's a fairly big jump, but not huge, not enormous. Like It's possible to me they could be a team that falls just because they... They lost some pieces this summer. Luca's so good, it might not matter. But I thought about them in this exercise. The same teams you mentioned, I thought about too. My answer, though, is only one. I think Utah out, Clippers in, and the Lakers and Blazers get into the plan but miss the postseason, which is insane. The West is insane. Yeah, I mean, that plan, I mean, you could be talking about a team that wins 40 games and is in the play-in next year. If like with a hundred percent health, and we know that's not going to happen, right? But like with with a team that's like ridiculously healthy, you could be talking about a team that's in the play in. And and I'm gonna be honest with you, right? We could still could be talking about the Lakers making the playoffs because who the heck wants to play LeBron in a one game play in? Right. <laughs> you know what they I mean? smoked so, the Warriors and they're playing two years ago, right? Yeah, you know what I mean. So that I think I think that's the biggest factor that that kind of plays into this, right? Like who's who's gonna be that team that stays the healthiest? Right. And when you talk about Dallas, right, Dallas is interesting to me, but I think you're looking at legitimately probably a top three player in the Western, could say probably a top three player in the Western Conference on their team. I don't think he's going to, the rest of that team is going to have to go bananas for them to make the playoffs. You're right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> Luca's amazing. I, I'm probably overthinking it. I just. I just thought about them a little bit. Their point differential was not amazing last year. Yeah. If Luca plays sixty games, all of a sudden you got you got to be thinking about it. Yeah. Got to be thinking about Damn, it. But Luca's like, in amazing shape. Like he's not coming in with the beer belly this year. You're right. That's also <laughs> very true. So I'll be fascinated by Dallas. I'll be fascinated by the entire Western Conference. An absolute bloodbath. We're talking about in the East, we're like, yeah, the Hornets should just walk into the play. And out West, it's like, holy crap, someone re- really good. Yeah. You know, maybe Sacramento, maybe Portland is just not even going to make the play in, which is insane to think about. Pat, man, any other thoughts today as we close out on Lockdown NBA? Nah, man, that's it for me, man. Appreciate you guys for tuning in and showing love. Make sure y'all leave a comment in the uh, in the description or in the comment section below. Let us know how you feel. Rate and review all that jazz on whatever you are listening on. Or like Pat said, comment on YouTube tomorrow as usual for Fridays. Adam Mara's Wes Goldberg. I'm guessing because they did top five offenses last week. They'll be doing top five defenses projected for this coming season. But that is a guess. Do not hold them to that. Either way, thank you all for listening today. And we'll see you next tomorrow. <laughs>